Now, getting into our first segment of the day, we're going to be doing a little bit of a preview slash reaction to the Soul series that just took place between the LA Dodgers and San Diego Padres. We're going to be starting with that series as the Dodgers also open the year as the betting favorites on most websites. So getting into them here, they just faced the Padres for a two-game series in Seoul, South Korea. First MLB game played in South Korea, and they end up splitting the series with a 5-2 win yesterday and a 15-11 loss this morning. This morning did highlight some questions that if you are going to be a doubter of the LA Dodgers, you could very possibly look to their defense, where we saw Max Muncy really struggle in this game at third base, where he had two errors that contributed to the Padres putting up 15 runs against them. It, of course, didn't help that Yoshinobu Yamamoto's MLB debut went very poorly, which we will be getting into. But for the Padres here, if you look at the overall situation in terms of their defense, it's a pretty tough position where Muncy has never been an incredible defender, but has seen his game tail off on that side of the ball a little bit over recent seasons. And now for them, the designated hitter position is of course locked up for the foreseeable future as the Dodgers signed Shohei Otani to a 10-year contract. And, of course, Otani probably going to eventually become a one-way player, but I would argue that he's more likely to become a full-time hitter than he is a full-time pitcher. We'll see with that, but Otani is one of the greatest hitters in the game of baseball, and I think that that is just probably why we're going to see as good as he is pitching as well hitting is where he reaches his historical marks and I would imagine that that is going to be the case long term which does make the future for Muncie if he can't figure it out on the defensive end a little bit cloudy in terms of remaining with the Dodgers long term but we also saw a change in the Dodgers lineup as of late where they made the decision to play Mookie Betts at shortstop as opposed to second base, which was initially thought to be the case. Mookie has won six Gold Glove Awards playing in right field throughout his career, but last season, late in the year, we saw him start to play second base because they have some extra guys in the outfield that they feel like they want to prioritize from an offensive position here where they can have a little bit more flexibility and we're talking about a Dodgers offense that is really loaded with talent so in a lot of ways this does make sense for them but it it was initially supposed to be that Mookie would be playing second this year but Gavin Lux who they initially had slated at shortstop was really struggling to with some accuracy issues throwing to first base from the shortstop position and now the Dodgers are deciding to roll Mookie out at the shortstop position which is of course a big ask for somebody who is entering his 30s and has never played the position there professionally and especially this late into the process of starting up the season now of course very long season so I'm sure he will have plenty of time to fully adjust to it by the time that the meaningful baseball games that the Dodgers are hoping to play will actually take place here but is definitely an interesting story here Mookie is an incredible athlete I think he's going to figure it out from the game this morning you saw there were a couple plays where he did bobble the ball a little bit. On one of them, he was able to recover and still beat the runner to second base anyways and force the out. So there's going to be an adjustment period, but I do trust Mookie, the athlete, to be able to figure it out when it 
calls for it for the Dodgers here. They also do still have Miguel Rojas on the roster who was their go-to shortstop for the majority of last season. So if things were to really turn sour on them they do have a backup option and again we have Mookie here who has plenty of experience in the outfield they just feel that the options they can have offensively with Jason Hayward and James Outman playing them in the outfield is just better suited for what they're looking for from their team but again I do think that there are a little bit of question marks surrounding their defense, especially with Max Muncy going forward. The Dodgers calling card though last season was offense and their production should be taking a step forward this year, adding Shohei Otani, one of the best hitters in MLB history. And being able to play Mookie at shortstop, now granted, it doesn't mean all that much. They just traded Lux for Mookie in the infield at least to start the season but Mookie's going to be the best offensive production in the MLB in terms of the shortstop position most likely that is he's off to an incredible start through these first two games just two games but that's because Mookie is an incredible offensive player and you don't see shortstops in today's MLB really put out the type of play that we have seen from Betts over the past handful of seasons again adding Otani to that just makes them that much more dangerous now there are also some questions in terms of their pitching just because of the way that last season played out now it's tough to judge them fully because of the fact that they had Dustin May Tony Gonsolin and Walker Bueller all injured during their postseason run Luis Ar Julio Arias that is he was arrested during the season so he was unable to play as well this season they add some extra talent to their rotation they bring in Yamamoto Tyler Glasnow James Paxton to help round out the rotation and yes Yamamoto's debut was absolutely dis disappointing he just struggled with control throughout the one inning that he pitched because that's all he was able to to reach his final line was four hits, a walk, five earned runs, and two strikeouts. So I don't think that this is going to be a fully long-term issue for him. It was strange almost how the control was just so off. I believe it probably had something to do with nerves, not that we can make all the excuses in the world for him, but I, I don't think that this is going to be the full version of Yamamoto that we see in the MLB this season. The Dodgers have a lot of talent in their pitching core and they did last year as well. They ultimately just weren't all able to make it to the postseason in terms of availability. We'll see if they can this season. They also, if you look at last year's playoffs, got a historically, or especially more so just in terms of their standards, Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman combining for just one hit in 24 plate appearances during that divisional round series. So can't really imagine that, that is going to happen once again, but we'll see. This is a Dodgers organization that is always in the mix and yet seems to have disappointed for a handful of years now, but we will see how this all plays out. They are the favorites and I guess we'll see. The Braves are second in betting odds to win the World Series this year. They were another team. Talked about historic offense with the Dodgers. That was the calling card, the go-to with the Braves last season. But unfortunately for them, when the postseason came around, they just didn't exist against the Phillies. And now credit, of course, to the Phillies pitching staff. They did an incredible job in that series. But the Braves were shut out at home for the first time since 2021. It was over two years since the last time that happened and they are returning a lot of their talent on the offensive side of the ball. So I don't think it should be a long-term issue for them. The biggest offseason move they made was to trade for pitcher Chris Sale. They moved off of their biggest remaining 
trade chip player, at least in terms of positional players, in Von Grissom. Said, send him to the Red Sox in exchange for Sale. Now, Sale was traded to the Red Sox in 2017, was a key part of their World Series run, and received an extension following that 2018 season, but has just not been the same level of player. Ultimately ended up being a really bad contract for Boston, but now the Braves aren't paying that same price, and they are able to get ideally the best version of Sale since he started dealing with injuries after that year where I thought that this past season was the best that he looked. If you look in terms of just being able to be available in the first place, he starts 20 games for the Red Sox last year, finished with a 4-3-0 ERA, which isn't tremendous, but it's also not bad. And there were stretches where he was dominant. So ideally, he can actually play the full season. We saw him ramping up a couple times and being frustrated with injuries. That's been a big part of his career past couple seasons, but I do think that the expectations are lower. He was supposed to be the ace for Boston, where the Braves already have a couple guys ahead of him in the rotation, and he isn't going to be expected to be really the full workhorse there. Another interesting piece that I'm not going to spend too much time on because I don't think that he's going to be a super prominent part of their upcoming season, but very interesting was the fact that they traded for Jared Kalanick. Kalanick was the number one prospect in the MLB pipeline for some time. He quickly climbed up into the majors and he hasn't lived up to expectations just yet. The, the Mariners ended up trading him along with a deal that was a salary dump and unfortunately that was just the level of value that he was seen at during these this past offseason but through 974 plate appearances we have seen Kalanick hit just 204 with a 283 on base percentage he did hit 200 253 last season and he's entering his age 24 season, so the hope is that not all is lost with him. Again, probably going to be a bench piece for them, but it is intriguing nonetheless, I think, for this Braves team that has done such an incredible job developing talent, getting them under contract on the earlier side to end up becoming great deals. So we'll see how that all plays out there. But because of that note, they also have so many of these key players that have been a part of their core for a handful of years still under contract. They are one of the best, if not the best, front office in the MLB, in my opinion. But you have the Rangers looking to defend their title in the American League. Using Vegas Insider, they are slated with the sixth best odds to win the World Series this year. They've been a high spending team the past couple seasons. This offseason, not so much. They did just add Michael Lorenzen to their rotation. I believe that signing was yesterday, if not two days ago. Lorenzen was technically an all star last year. The Tigers needed a representative. It's not like he was having necessarily a big time all star season, although he did have some high highs for the Tigers and then ultimately was traded to the Phillies where he showed some flashes there, but ultimately the consistency was not there with Lorenzen. He had his ups and downs, hit the open market, and got just a $4.5 million contract from the Rangers. But I think this is a pretty decent deal for them where they're dealing with injuries in their rotation. Max Scherzer, Jacob deGrom, and Tyler Molly is, are all expected to miss some time at the beginning of the season won't be back until later in the year and he can Lorenzen that is can definitely carry some of the workload for them for the first bit of the season and if he can reach those top levels that we've seen from him in stretches this could be a sneaky nice signing for the defending champs now we have the Astros Yankees and Orioles all listed above them in terms of odds it's hard to deny the Astros at this point. I know that not a lot of people want to hear about the Astros, the villains, but some time is enough time, in my opinion, has passed to the point where 
just this consistent success with them. Yes, they cheated, but it's clearly so much more than that. The way that they've put these rosters together, the amount of talent that they have, you can hate them, but other than cheating, clearly they're doing something right where they have made the AL Championship game or series that is seven seasons in a row. They have made the World Series four times in that stretch and won it all twice. So the Astros are an extremely formidable opponent. The, they are the favorites in the American League as of now. The Yankees won a lot of headlines this offseason, of course trading for Juan Soto, who isn't under contract past this season just yet, but I'm sure that the Yankees are going to do everything that they can to possibly make sure that he is there long term. The thought of the duo of him and Aaron Judge at their full peak of powers is extremely scary for MLB fans and very intriguing to see how it plays out. Judge is still supposedly doing better now, but I guess during the offseason there were reports that the torn ligament in his toe that he suffered last year are still lingering a little bit. I don't think it's going to affect his bat whatsoever. If he's not as effective in the bases, then I guess that's it's a hit, of course, but that's not necessarily when you're hitting as many home runs as you know a fully healthy Aaron Judge is. Ultimately, I think Yankees fans can sort of move on from that and be all right with it. Um, but the issue is the rest of the lineup, and that's what it was last year, and it was really highlighted when Judge missed all the time that he did with that torn ligament, where there's just not a ton of super convincing surrounding talent. They had they had last year and have this year Glaber Torres, who had a very solid season for himself. They just went out and added Alex Verdugo in the offseason with a trade. Verdugo has been a very solid bat for the Red Sox over the past couple seasons, but ultimately outside of that, can't definitively say I have confidence in any individual player. Now, if Anthony Volpe can develop for them, that would be a huge addition, but I don't know. It, it, last season was not great for him at the plate. You have a DJ LeMahieu who has always been more of a defender. Would be nice to see him have a bat. He's still solid in the lineup, but again, I just don't think that they have outside of, and we're talking, we just talked about some of these teams like the Dodgers, the Braves, the Astros. I don't think anybody's going to argue, you know, take the top two players out of each of those lineups. There's a big difference between the depth of the rest of the batting orders than there is with the Yankees, but the Yankees also added Marcus Stroman this offseason to add to their starting rotation. Garrett Cole could be in contention for a Cy Young Award. For Yankees fans, seeing uh, Nestor Cortez bounce back this season would be a big development for them as well, but I guess we'll have to see on that. Now, last season, we saw the Cinderella runs in the postseason with Texas and Arizona. So as we know, baseball is a funny thing where sometimes teams just get hot and it, it you have the starting pitching and you get some hitters get hot. Nothing can stop a team. So I'm boring. I'm going chalk in terms of my expectations. I would go Dodgers and Astros to come out of the National League and American League face off in the World Series. But let me know what your thoughts are on the potential World Series matchup because I think we are primed for a very nice season here ahead. But we're going to be taking our first break and when we come back, we're going to be diving into the massive story around Shohei Otani and his translator committing a big time crime, robbing him of $4.5 million. So we'll be getting into all of that on the other side. Stick with us.